What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Rev Sanity, and today we're gonna to be reviewing and test riding the all new 2021 Rogue King Special. But before we get to the ride, let's go over a few specs. For 2021, we have the Milwaukee 8 114 V-Twin motor, which is putting out a reported 118 foot-pounds of torque at 3,250 RPMs. This colorway is the much anticipated and brand new for 2021 Snake Venom. It comes with two hard cases, totaling a max capacity of 16.1 gallons. It has a six-speed transmission with cruise control. It has a fuel capacity of six gallons with an estimated fuel consumption of a reported 43 miles per gallon and a curb weight of 807 pounds. We have a wheelbase of 64 inches, a seat height of 27.4 inches, a rake of 26 degrees, a fork angle 29.25 degrees, and a trail of 6.9 inches. For the front tire, we have a Dunlop 13060R19, and for the rear, we have a Dunlop 18055R18. We have dual hydraulic Brembo disc brakes in the front and a hydraulic disc in the rear. I want to give Emerald Coast Harley Davidson a very special thank you for letting me take out this 2021 Road King special. I actually prepared an intro showcasing their dealership, so let's roll that intro and get right into the test ride. What's up everybody? Today we are on this 2021 Road King man in the Snake Venom. I just want you to see how gorgeous this is before we actually take it out. Obviously we're at the beach so it had to come out and get it in the sunlight to get just how spectacular that paint job is. Seeing it in person versus seeing it on the premiere was amazing. You got, got a little one right here. That's pretty freaking dope. This is technically my second ride, but it's my first time riding it. I just had to ride it from the dealership to the beach so I can get like some sweet shots that you'll see at the end of the video or the beginning of the video. But let's get on it, man. We got this, uh, we got the 114. We got to rip into a little bit. This is a brand new bike. It's got, how many miles it got on it? I always forget the triggers there. 28 miles, there we go. All right, so let's start this bad boy up. Right off the bat, just a, that 114 sounds great. Well, let's get to riding this bad boy and let's talk about the ins and outs of it. It is a big boy. I'll tell you what, this Road King though, that's a lot of bike. When I left the dealership with it, I was like, whoa, oh God, it's so kind of heavy and wonky at first. But then after about two or three minutes, I was like, all right, cool, we got it. And I'll tell you now, it sits like a king. It feels like a classic bike. It feels like I just strolled right out of the 1950s with it. I feel like Elvis should be in the background or something. But this right here, Bagger, I mean, look at this thing, like this green, unbelievable. I absolutely love it. I think Harley did a really good job with coming out with that green for sure. Or oh, excuse me, the snake venom. I can't, I can't misquote it. <laughs> but this thing is gorgeous, man. I really do like the look of it a lot. It's got just such a classic throwback look. Basically, it feels like a road glide without a fairing. Now the seat, seat actually feels really good. I do like the fact that it's got the running boards down here. Like my heels, I mean, my whole foot just feels so comfortable right here. Like I just, I feel like I'm just sitting on a, on a sofa. That 114's got plenty of punch. Plenty for what I need over here. I was also, that was a fifth gear pull. It does have cruise control too, that's nice. Just push that in and then push down to set it, hand off, and you're in cruise control. Easy as that. Press it again to disengage it. All right, so basic Harley handlebar features. You got your traction control right here. So when you push on that, you can see a little rain thing come up. I guess it just uh, limits the power to the, to the wheels whenever you're riding just like a rain mode on any other modern vehicle that's one thing that harley is a little slow on on every single development of their new bikes it's just like come on man throw some more tech in there 
The integration of the cruise control is, that's a massive win for me. You got your left indicator, you got your brights, regulars, you got your horn. And then up here, this right here took me forever to figure out like where the, how to change stuff. Cause I'm so used to mine being up here. So like I would, I would click on that and then nothing was happening. But anyway, you click it, you go from your gears to your front tire pressure, your rear tire pressure, your mileage, 32 miles, trip A, trip B, your range for your gas, your time and your gear again. And on the left side, you have your engine kill switch and then your, uh, engine start and then your emergency blinkers and your engine turnover and your right indicator. Pretty simple, pretty standard. If you watched any of my other videos, you know that I'm a really big fan of analog. I'm not a huge fan of digital on V-Twins. You know, if it was something like a sport bike, I don't mind. I actually rode an FZ09. If you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Thank you for checking out the channel. We talk about motorcycle things and life and bike reviews, gear reviews and whatever makes me happy. But when I very first started the channel, I rode a 2015 Yamaha FZ09, and I love that bike. It had a nice M4 on it, exhaust that is, and a Power Commander, and that was fun. But anyway, with that bike, I can handle the digital. Something like this, I want analog. And dang it, Harley, why couldn't you put this little stuff right here above it, or even like integrated within the, the headlight or something? Because anytime I put a blinker on, I can't see it at all. Bam, I have to look way down and see where there it is. And that takes my eyes off the road. For me, that's unsafe. It doesn't look like that was designed for people with full face helmets. But yeah, 60 miles an hour, this thing just wants to cruise. Performance wise, beautiful. Now stopping wise, I do, I gotta say, man, I'm kind of un, I'm kind of unimpressed with the stopping power a little bit. Even with the dual front discs, it just feels it feels really spongy to me. It doesn't really feel like it wants to bite. And I mean, I get it, it's also a big bike, but I mean, it definitely doesn't, it doesn't bite like I would want it to, you know what I mean? Really my only gripes with the bike, Harley should have relocated this right here, where it shows like your neutral and your oil and your high beams and your indicators on the left and right. They should have relocated it like in this area right here. They should have integrated with that. Cause that just feels more natural to look down. That does not feel natural, nor does it feel safe. I guess just like the lack of technology. And I mean, that really just kind of depends on what you like. I kind of like it actually. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that Harley doesn't have a lot of technology and you kind of pay for a premium. But that's another thing is the price. You know, you're like Harley's getting to the point where, you know, it's a luxury motorcycle without a luxury feel. Like they got luxury pricing without the luxury feel. And that's, you know, it is what it is. I personally love my Harley, and so, and I, and I used to hate on them so hard until I could throw my leg over my breakout, and I was like, well, that's a wrap. <laughs> and uh, I haven't had a chance to ride an Indian yet, so eventually, you know, I would love to be able to do some reviews on Indians. You can see how they kind of compare. I know the Challenger was a big, uh, the Challenger's got a ton of performance, but I mean, obviously that's a totally different bike than this. You're looking at the Road Glide range at that point. But other than that, I really like this bike. It's um, it's definitely a good classic feel and a classic look. There's just something about the Road King that sticks out more to me than a Road Glide. And I want a Road Glide. I love the big fat headlight that's on the front. It just kind of has like, like a, a, just a big beefy feel to it. I imagine that's what the fat boy kind of feels like too, but with bags. I don't know, there's just something different about the way the Road King feels. It feels like I'm a king on the road. It is very nimble, very agile. And like, it's got a much better lean angle than mine, than my breakout does for sure. I love my breakout, but man, I'll scrape the park, I'll scrape the pegs leaving the parking lot. I do kind of wish the handlebars were kind of more leaned in, kind of turned in, I mean, cause this right here kind of feels a little bit more, I don't know, it doesn't really feel as comfortable. Maybe it's not bad by any means, but that's what the first thing people do when they get a new motorcycle typically is fix the, uh, besides exhaust in there and take maybe, you know, looking at upgrading the handlebars. Maybe some like some mini apes or something, just something to kind of like set me back. I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier without going into full detail, but the seat on it is actually really comfortable. The riding position, you know, it's a cruiser, you know, you expect to sit upright and a lot of, a lot of wind coming in your face. Obviously there's no fairing. 
And I really do enjoy this snake venom, man. One angle it kind of looks purple, and the other angle it looks green. It's just a it's just a mean looking color. Who would I recommend this bike to? I would recommend this bike to anybody that wants to get into the backer world, 100%. It's always too comfortable for me, you know what I mean? Like I was, I was really surprised at just how like stock, I'm like, man, I could just, I feel like I could, if I had some, some forward controls or, or not forward controls, like some forward and foot press, foot rest or something like that. I just lean back into it, man. This is a, this is a real smooth ride. I could definitely ride, you know, a thousand miles on this easily. Don't know that I would recommend this for beginner bikers though, for sure, because it is a heavy bike. And for references, I am six feet, about 194. And uh, obviously I can flat foot, this, flat foot this no problem. And even like the, uh, those are kind of like forward mid controls a little bit, but that running boards, these running boards on it just makes, <laughs> my legs feel comfortable. I don't feel cramped. Just give me some apes, some mini apes or something, and then this right here will be a, a really solid bike. Oh, that's nice. I do like the way they did the Harley Davidson emblem right there. Let's see how she does these roundabouts. Oh, just a little 20 mile an hour round. It was nice and comfortable, nice and leanable. Well, lane number two. Oh, yeah. Feels nice. All right, you guys. So I'm going to head back to the dealership, drop this off and let them sell this to somebody because this paint job is gorgeous. Big shout out to Emerald Coast Harley Davidson for letting me take it out. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You know, we're, we're a new channel. We're giving away a GoPro. Once we hit a thousand subscribers, I hit GoPro Hero 9 Black with an adventure kit and five micro SD cards. All for uh, just to, as, a, as a token of gratification. I really appreciate you guys checking out the channel, you know always looking for ways to grow and help uh, educate the motorcycle community and just make motorcycle content for people who love motorcycles who doesn't love motorcycles but you guys stay decent also hit me up on instagram at rev sanity i love uh, i love chatting with you guys as much as i can as much as my schedule allows but until next time you guys stay decent all right peace